No, no, no! Yeah, I can't get one. I don't want to. Can you sort that out? Or not? Oh, man. Hooked a carp. My spool is knotted up. I can't give line. And I'm stuck on light line. Trying not to let this carp run very far. But I'm on light line. And if it wants to go, I'm going to get snapped. And I've got a little bit of spare line. And I haven't got a spare hand to try and undo this tangle. <laughs> and I want the mercy of whatever happens. Yeah, today we're at the Glebe in Peckleton, Leicestershire, which is a commercial, uh, like many match waters around the country. Although, although this method does work on other commercials and non-commercials, if you get out and try it. It can even work on canals, but it, really you just need to find a water which has got plenty of stock and then you've got a good chance of it working. If, if you look through match results and find matchmen are catching 40 and 50 pound of fish in winter, you can probably catch on your fly rod. If they're catching one or two fish, don't bother. flies really can depend on your water obviously this lake here is maybe three foot in the edge shelving out to six ish foot so I always want to fish with a line at least six foot or more of tippet so that you can guarantee at some point your fly will be on the deck in the deepest water um, and in this one I've probably got eight or nine foot of leader out with three flies on so if I cast straight out into the deeper water and let things sink the point fly will definitely touch down probably the dropper will just about as well and the the top dropper will just be somewhere up in mid water but if I cast down the edges where it's only three foot deep all three flies will get down at some point Spacing wise, two and a half foot between each fly. It's coloured water, so you can get away with less. You can use more, but you don't need a huge, huge long leader with the coloured water. But also fishery rules, some places are not going to allow you to fish with three flies. So you might have to just put one fly on and hedge your bets on that one working. Uh, the weights of the flies, the point is the heaviest fly. And even that is very light. A mill and a half tungsten bead is usually all you need. No weight on the other two flies. Uh, occasionally, if it's very, very calm, I'll put no weight on any fly and just rely on them all naturally sinking really, really slowly. So you do then have to wait quite a while for things to get down. Right, the direction you fish can be vitally important to success on these lakes, I've found. If the wind's blowing left to right, you want to cast into the wind and then retrieve slowly back with the wind. Um, because if, if you've ever bait fished, you will know if you throw maggots in when a, a lake's drifting, when the wind's drifting one way, you see your maggots drift with the wind and then as they get down a little tiny bit, they suddenly start drifting back the other way because the undertow is going in the opposite direction. Oh, and we have a fish. We have to stop for a fish because it's everyone's favourite gudgeon. The casting is pretty much like casting a 10 cara or French leader. It's just 
a simple leader system, short line, and just flick it up, up against the wind is usually the best direction. I've got very, very light flies on. The point fly, I think, has a mil and a half tungsten bead. The other two flies have no weight at all. So they're going to sink incredibly slowly, but there'll be a very slow drift going back the opposite direction. So a mil and a half is all you need. If it was really blowing a hooli, you might put two, oh, that was a tiny take. You might put two mil, two and a half mil. But you, you never need very much weight at all. And then slowly, slowly tweak back. A method I've found that's been working recently is to give about a six inch to an eight inch pull back very slowly, then lower your rod and allow the line to drift back. And I think what that does, it, as you pull, the flies lift up. And then by pushing your line back, I think everything drops in a vertical plane really slowly and takes it off and come as they're dropping. It's a very subtle method, but it does work. This is going. No. I've got a, a nymph line on which is really well greased up and on the end of that is just a little bit of floating putty which you don't need but it just helps to spot the end of the line and helps to keep it up and stop your flies dragging it under. But I tend to, when possible, keep all the line off the water so just the very tip with the putty on is touching and then Watch that like a hawk, using the end of your rod if it's windy as like a stable point so you can see movement against that. Otherwise, if you get a, a centimetre or an inch twitch on the indicator, there. Feels like a big gudgeon again. Is it all gudgeon today? Yeah. Yeah, take, takes are anything from a tiniest tremble on the end of the line, the line twitching away. There we go. Another good one. It's about the time now where you start eating carp, silly. That's coming back against the shelf now. Yeah, you know what that is. So as you drag it against that shelf, that's when they take. I said it was time for carp, silly. Light's starting to go, dragging it in against the shelf. This reel is not the best for playing carp, but it doesn't matter. All fun and games. I don't understand you. Throw me in your sheets and lay with me. You leave me to somewhere brand new. There's something about you that saves me. Wise, I use anything from a six foot little tiny brook rod. I've used match rods, ledger rods, long uh, Euro nymphing rods as they call them. 
you, you ideally you just want as light a rod as you can so that small fish are fun to play. You want to have a good gym putting a little bend in your rod. If you get a four ounce roach, you want to be cushioning it and playing it in gently. You don't want to be using sevens and eight weights just because you might have a five pound carp. You'll, you'll still land that on three pound tippet with a really soft rod. If your lake's not full of snags, which most of these commercials are not, you'll catch fish. You'll, well, you'll land fish. Mm -hmm.